Hi there, I'm recording this to help you better understand how to write a reflection on your learning. Not only do you write one, a memo in TECM 5195 at the end of the course, but those of you who are working toward the TechCom MA will write a reflective essay to submit along with a print and web portfolio of work in place of a thesis at the end of your degree program. As I noted in my video introducing you to this course, I believe that learning happens through multiple cycles rather than in a straight uphill climb. Although I'm using the same example with Michael Phelps learning to compete in the 100 meter butterfly, I'm talking about the phases of the learning cycle in a different order. It's a cycle, so it doesn't matter where you start. If you think about learning in school, I would guess you feel like you've spent nearly all of your time in the conceptualizing phase. Most students spend a lot of time listening to what experts have to say, their theories about different topics. Phelps' coach taught him about the importance and different types of turn technique in butterfly competition. The coach's ideas were all theory, unless Phelps actually experimented by doing some new turn techniques and drills in the pool. All theory has to be put into practice if learning is going to take place. Practice may not be fun, but it's essential to all learning. If he stopped with experimentation, Phelps wouldn't know what he learned. He has to use what he's learned in another experience. In other words, he has to compete in another race. Experiences allow you to measure your learning. If you don't reflect on your learning, the cycle ends you stop learning. While I hope you've reflected on your learning many times during this course, and you'll do the same during all of your TECM courses, I want to hear your interpretation of what you've learned at the end of our course. Similarly, the entire grad faculty wants to hear your reflection on what you've learned at the end of the TechCom degree program. So let me spend just a minute talking about the similarities and differences with the reflective writing in this course versus the MA program. What's similar? You're writing to a faculty audience and not just any faculty, the TechCom faculty. You're supposed to demonstrate your competencies in TechCom from the coursework you've taken. You're supposed to use in-text citations and a references page to connect the things you've read, listened to, heard, seen in different courses and you're supposed to apply writing and document design principles in the reflective writing that you do. Here's what's different. In TECM 5195, you're supposed to focus on the comprehensive edit assignment. That's the content of what you're going to be writing about. In the MA program, you're going to talk about portfolio artifacts. That's the content of your reflective writing. What's also different is word expectations. I'm asking you to write a minimum of 500 words in this course. In the MA program, it would be a couple thousand words. Another thing that's different, I'm asking you to write this in the form of a memo addressed to me. The MA program has you write an essay. Finally, the last difference, in TECM 5195, the reflective written memo is worth 10% of your course grade. In the MA program, your reflective essay is part of the portfolio requirement, which you must pass in order to get your degree. So to help you succeed in the reflective writing, I'm going to point out some details in a sample memo. The one I'm showing you was written by a student in a different course that I was teaching. Uh, what they were doing was they were beginning to develop their web portfolio for the MA requirement and so they were writing about different assignments from those that you've completed in TECM 5195. They're not, in other words, they're not talking about the comprehensive edit project. Let's look at the first paragraph under the heading single source publishing. Because the students were required to talk about artifacts in their web portfolio, the student specifies which artifacts are relevant. Then they mention specific concepts from the course, for example, structured authoring, and then link them to specific activities the student completed, for example, using the XML editor in Madcap Flare. The student also includes in-text citations, citing specific sources from the course. 
I'm showing those in yellow highlights. That's not how the student presented them. I'm doing that just so that you can see how they've been used in the memo. Remember that for 5195, sources are listed on each module's instructional materials page. This student includes the complete source for those in-text citations at the end of the memo on a reference page. You may find your weekly discussion posts, since they're about readings, lectures, and course assignments, they might provide you with ideas for your memo. Feel free to expand upon what you've already written when you were updating us about your activities and your thinking in that particular module. In addition to including the correct content, the body of this memo is 653 words, so it meets the length requirement. It's formatted as a memo addressed to me. It's logically organized at both the macro and micro levels. It's visual design with headings enhances the ease of reading. And its mechanics are flawless. In short, the student demonstrates competence as a technical communicator, as well as a clear understanding of their own learning during the course. I hope this has been helpful. Reach out if you have questions.